addresses in a way, you know, a relationship with the Most High God is an intimate one. It is one not dissimilar to um, a marriage type relationship. We have union with our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We have intimacy with our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We are his bride, he is our bridegroom. And he, he takes care of us in sickness and in health, <laughs> richer or poorer, amen. He is always with us when we are abundant or when we are not so abundant. He is there, he is with us when we are traveling or when we are at home. We are always on a mission, Minister John. We are always on a, on a mission for Christ. There is much to be done in the fields. Time is getting short. Amen. Who realizes that? Amen. Time is getting short. Amen. When we have our Bible classes on Thursday, the first question I ask is what, somebody? What has happened? What have you seen or heard? Or read that lets you know that we are living in the last day. What have you seen, heard, or read that lets you know that we are living in the last days? Truly, the things that we have seen recently, the things that we have heard, whether it's about the, uh, the natural world, nature, or uh, uh, things that the evil that is present among people, things that we are doing to each other. Uh, all of these things are, are signs to all of us that Satan is, is, is gearing up for his last hurrah. And his last hurrah, folks, is coming soon, sooner than you think. But today, I want to focus in on, on Jesus. And if you would turn to me, with me, to Luke chapter 1. As I said, I like Christmas songs. <coughs> oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come, let us
was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abishai. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well on in years. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go to the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear, wouldn't you be? But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will, be, will he bring back to the Lord their God and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well on in years. She's been a puzzle. How can this happen? The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. In the sixth month, verse 26, we're going down to verse 26 now. Here we have uh, a, a, the angel Gabriel being sent on another mission. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to be told that we have found favor with God? You will be with child. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, you notice in both instances, the angel told the individual what to name their child. All right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end, can the church say amen? amen. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? She had never slept with a man before. How can this be? Now you have one woman who is menopausal and another one who's a virgin, and both are being told that they're gonna have babies. In the first instance, the husband of the menopausal woman was being told that his wife was going to have the baby. So, how can this be? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of who? God, the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing 
is impossible with God. Say that with me. For nothing is impossible with God. So Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. So here we have in this one family, two miracle, two miracle births are about to happen. Six months apart. By the time that the angel appears to Mary, Elizabeth is already six months pregnant. She's well showing now. She's very much uncomfortable. And Mary, her cousin, is a virgin, a spouse to a man by the name of Joseph. But they have not consummated their relationship yet. Isn't that an interesting thing? Isn't that an interesting point for today's uh, generation? But I digress. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says in the King James Version, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Now the angel Gabriel said his name would be called what? Jesus. But here Isaiah is told that his name would be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Huh. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Nothing is impossible with God. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will establish this. So here we have a prophecy that went forth, oh, maybe 600 years before, about a, a birth of a child that would be called Wonderful Counselor, um, and that the kingdom would rest on his shoulders, and of the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end. And this kid's name would be Jesus, but there would be a forerunner, his cousin John, who would also have purpose in kingdom building. Do you get what I'm saying to you today? That God has a purpose for each and every life given today. Amen. You may think that you have nothing to offer, nothing to give, but God has purpose for you. Before the beginning of time, God knew that you were going to come into the world. And he granted you gifts, talents, and abilities that were for you for your season in time. Now, you can waste your time if you want to. Jesus was an interesting kid. How many of you know that? There's not much said about Jesus as a child, but, but, but in my you know, spiritual imagination, I, I see him as an interesting kid. He had to be. Peculiar. peculiar. We're called peculiar, right? A royal priesthood, and who was more royal than Jesus? At 12 years old, he was astounding the educated minds of the Sadducees and the, and, the, and the Pharisees in the temple at 12 years old. Can you imagine that? We would call such a child what? A genius today. A prodigy. But at 12 years old. And he, he, he didn't disobey his parents. He just kind of, you know, didn't follow them back home at the established time. So his parents went looking for him as any parent would and they found him in the temple, talking to these learned people and astounding them with his wisdom. But how many of you know that each of us has an appointed time and an appointed season for our ministry or for our purpose, whatever that purpose is? Mm -hmm. Jesus waited, at least in the Bible, um, he doesn't appear again for 30 years. And who does he go see but? His cousin John. Isn't that interesting? Not four thirty years, but until he was yeah, yeah. 
Thank you for that correction. You're very, very smart. <laughs> he was 30 years old, is what I meant to say. Yeah, so it was 18 years. My math has never been that good. But thank you for knowing what I meant. So for 18 years, we don't hear about Jesus. And then in his 30th year, he's 30 years old, we read that he goes to see, to see his cousin John, who was doing what, John? Baptizing. He was baptizing. <laughs> wade in the water. Are we getting ready for baptism today? Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. of Jesus and his cousin John. But let's get back to the mothers for a minute. Mary left to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. And when she came to see Elizabeth, you'll find this all in, in Luke. Read the whole story. It's, it's a real interesting story. It's a story of, of two families, but it's also a story for us today. Mary goes to see uh, Elizabeth to stay with her for a while. Now, let's think about what could have happened to Mary being um, pregnant, being found pregnant, um, unmarried, in those days, she could have been killed under Levitical law. That would never happen today. Can the church say amen? Amen. But again, I digress. But God had, had you know, the angels of protection are encamped around them that fear him. She was chosen. She would, the angel said, you have found favor with God. And so she was chosen. So nothing was going to happen to her. Yes, she had to deal with the scrutiny. Yes, she had to deal with a man who was her own father's rebuke. What the heck is going on here? You know, these are, these are natural things that go on that would have gone on in that time. But yes, she, she stood tall. And she decides to go see her, her cousin, Elizabeth, who was already great with child. And 
She gets to the door, Elizabeth opens the door, and the minute she sees Mary, the child in her womb, Elizabeth's womb, leaped, leaped in her womb. The, the child had been still for a while, and she was worried about this baby. I'm paraphrasing scripture, but you get the point. But the child leaped in her womb in recognition of the light that was in Mary. And, and, and Elizabeth understood exactly what was going on and greeted her cousin so warmly. But isn't it interesting what God will do when we have purpose in him? Now, yes, I'm talking about two miraculous births, but I'm talking about pe just people now and how God will put a hedge of protection around you when you have been chosen for a purpose. I'm talking about the fact that you have purpose and that all of us have a season in which to accomplish our purpose. Does that make sense? John went on and he became a great man for his time. Jesus went on to become the savior of us all. Let's get back to the story. Mary became pregnant with the son of God and she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me, even as you have said. I reiterated that because I wanted to point out the fact that, for me, that is a faith statement. And they tell me that faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of things that we cannot see. For by it, the elders obtain the good report. Mary has certainly obtained a good report. May it be unto me, even as you have said. I'm sure she didn't understand this rare opportunity. I don't know um, if, she, if she fully comprehended the, uh, the magnitude of it all. But she is revered today for her obedience, and for her faithfulness. And I'm going to jump to another scripture, Acts 2 and 1. On the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one room on one accord. Guess who was up there in that room? Mother Mary. Mother Mary. So when the Holy Spirit came down on that day, Guess what? She was also engulfed by the Holy Spirit, but she had a special recognition because that same God that, that she had carried for nine months had in, is now indwelt in her again. And I could just imagine her leaping again for joy because God was with her once again in her in her. She was up in that upper room. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. When the Holy Spirit came on her the first time, there was a physical change. When the Holy Spirit came on her the second time, there was a spiritual change in her. The first time, if the, the, the Spirit came on her, she, she was pregnant with a child. The second time, she was pregnant with purpose, with authority, and power, power of the Holy Ghost. It's hard to imagine that kind of intimacy. If we look back, again, we're going back and forth, but if we look back at uh, Zechariah the priest, who was uh, Elizabeth's husband, we see that he, uh, he had some problems with the possibility of this pregnancy. 
He vowed it. Right. Luke 1 and 20 says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. There's a cost to not believing God. There's a cost to not believing God. And in this instance, Zechariah the priest was struck dumb. But we must remember that God is speaking to all of us at all times. And, and, and no matter what he says, we are to listen. We are to be still and what? Know that he is God. I thank God for Greater Faith Ministries and for what he's doing in and through us. If you turn with me to uh, Luke 1, again, can stay in Luke 1, and I'm going to use my electronic Bible today. Isn't it wonderful to have these kinds of toys? That's your availability. I'm just going to read that story I told you about from Luke 1, starting at 39. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Mm -hmm. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that? In a, long, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb Leap for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Now the rest of this is Mary's song. And it's called, the Catholic Church calls it the Magnificat. And starting at 46 it says, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their throne, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. And when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that, he, that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no. He is to be called John. They said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out, remember he's still dumb, he can't talk, to find out what he would like to name the child. 
He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Immediately, the Bible says, immediately his mouth was open and his tongue set free, and he began to speak praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wonder wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand is with him, and the word of the Lord is blessed. We all know that things happen in the natural, but there's activity going on in the spirit. God is moving amongst his people even now. God is moving amongst his people even now. We can say with Mary, my soul, our soul doth magnify the Lord, for he hath done great things for us. I see ministry breaking forth in these pews. Amen. I see this as a birthing room of sorts. Everyone in here, seated right now, every single human being in these seats is pregnant with promise. Every one of you is pregnant with promise. And sometimes a delivery can be difficult. It can be hard. Sometimes labor takes a long time, doesn't it? Sometimes labor can wipe a woman out. But the promise, the promise is the child that is getting ready to be born. Each of you is getting ready to birth something in the spirit. It may be difficult for you to even accept me saying this to you. But just as God chose two ordinary people who happen to be in the same family, so will God use Greater Faith Ministries to birth something for his kingdom building because it's not about us. It's about him. Jesus said, I've come to do the will of my father. He didn't come to do his will. Even when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he knew exactly what he was going to go through. Make no bones about that. He knew exactly what he was going through, what he was heading towards. He said, Father, if it's, your, if it's your will, remove this bitter cup from me. Yet, not my will, but thy will be done. And that's what we have to say when we accept God's purpose and his mandate on our lives. It's not about me. It's not about me. Resisted the call so long to ministry. Because, just because, I knew that was a big assignment. I knew there was, poss there was a big possibility, and it turned out that a lot of people wouldn't accept this new assignment that God had for me. But finally, I said, yes. But I said, God, I need you now more than ever before. I need you to take care of my family. I need you to provide the way for me to go to school, because I knew that's what he wanted me to do. And he said, if you take care of my business, 
I will take care of your business. And he was no shorter than his word to me. I was sitting out in the car when he said those words to me. And I hear them as clearly today as I heard them then. He said, if you take care of my business, I will take care of your business. And so we've gone through many ups and we've gone through many downs over the years. But God is no shorter than his word. So whatever it is that's pulling on the inside of you, or even if you're trying to figure it out, go to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Mary was just a teenage girl. Just a teenage girl. Elizabeth was an older woman who thought her time for having children had passed her by. And in those days, to be barren was considered a curse. You were cursed by God. But God blessed her in her old age and gave her an anointed son, a son that would be the forerunner of the son of God. The two parallels, we can't, we will never be able to ignore. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. That's what this Christmas season is all about. I haven't even sent out Christmas cards yet. I'm so far behind in all the stuff that I usually so. <laughs> No Christmas cards. <laughs> we have our annual Kwanzaa. I got some flyers for you. Everybody's invited. Everybody. about the tradition, and I love tradition, I really do, I'm a tradition girl, but he sat me down this week, he stopped me in my tracks, he said, you're not going any further, I let you go to that meeting on Wednesday, <laughs> but after that, <laughs> it's all over but the camp. so I was still and I had to hear from him. So all this other stuff that I, I was gonna do, get the house ready, clean up, you know, do that extra cleaning that you do when you nothing has been done. Nothing. Because that's part that's the tradition that we have put in this season. You know, the cooking and you know, and I like cooking cakes and I like the smell the smell of the house, you know, as the cakes are cooking and all the stuff, you know. But God said, he, told, he said, that's not important. He said, you can invite people over to the house. They don't have to have a big formal invitation. And if they're looking at the little dust bunny, shame on them. <laughs> there might be a dust bunny or two. <laughs> might be something. All I know is that Jesus is the reason for this season. And that's our bottom line today. Let's go back to, oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come. 